good morning. Today is Wednesday the 9th of August and I do know that because it's my granddaughter's first birthday. My name's Julie and I'm coming to you from Suffolk and um, where I live with my husband Jonathan and well just my dog and cat now because all my kids have left home. Phoebe's just moved to London. So um, we're in Estes and it is nice I have to say. I do like it. So apologies for the state of my hair. I've just washed my hair and um, I hardly ever brush my hair, but it is looking dreadful actually today. So um, I might have to brush it at some point. So anyway, I'm Julie. <clears throat> I run Suffolk Socks, which is a small online yarn shop that stocks um, indie and commercial yarn for knitting socks. Although it is primarily four ply, so you could knit anything with it really. Um, a, a variety of projects, but primarily it's aimed at choosing wool for socks. Um, and I'm also the dyer behind the Yarn Tart, which is my yarn label. Um, so that can be found in the shop as well. So there you go, that's me. So how are you? Well, it's been a while since I podcast, and I say it. I say it a while just on the basis that I'm all a bit like tongue twisted and not quite sure what I'm doing but you know if I'm honest with myself I could do it a hundred times and I would still be airy fairy with it. So I have got some notes which actually when I look at them don't even make sense to me now. Um, <clears throat> I've got the segments are going to be whips, works in progress, finished objects, that's going to be short and sweet because I haven't got any. Um, plans, chitter chatter, future events and the shop. So it's all, it's going to be a short podcast. Well, I'll try and keep it a, a short podcast today. So whips, well, I've got lots of whips. I always have lots of whips. Um, it keeps, keeps, keeps me happy. Right, the first thing on my needles is um, I've been having a sort out and I found these. I'm dreadful for finding things. It's like the cupboard of shame. I go in and um, I think, oh, what's in this bag? And then I have a look in and I think, oh, bloody hell, I forgot about that. But actually, I'm quite pleased I found these. These are my um, socks. And I must have started these ages ago. Um, these are on DPNs, Zing DPNs, 2.25. Now, I always knit my socks on a 2.50. Um, but this is Stylecraft head over heels which is beautiful to knit with but it's a slightly thinner it's a slightly lighter weight four plier I found so what I've done is um I have gone down the size needle but up my stitch to give me the the fabric I like I don't like loose knitting I can my gear well I haven't really got a gauge on a sock but um so this is this one and it's stripey and they've got a good selection of sock yarn, style craft. You know, I know they're the lower end of the price range, but actually, I mean, this is this is really nice to knit with. It's a good price. Um, lovely colours. They've got some in tonals, tonal colours, and self striping. Um, I've seen shawls knit up because you get a free pattern for a shawl pattern. I've seen the shawl knit up, and that's beautiful. And um, one of my friends knit wasn't the hitchhiker but it was a big short and she had to go into another ball but it was just as lovely really pretty so that's um my first whip I don't know whether that'll ever become an F or because it's been a whip for years and that's in my little bag these are my bags I make um, I don't I haven't put them in the shop um this was a blanket that was my grandma Lizzie's um, and I've had it for years. It's been in the bottom of, I've got a big wooden trunk I got for a wedding present 29 years ago off one of my uncles. And um, it's been all over with me and my husband. And it's got all my, um, it's full of junk actually. It's got all like birth cards from when I had the kids and christening cards and the first birthday cards and just a load of junk really. And, um, I keep saying I'm going to get rid of them all and just throw them out um, because they've sat there for 25 years, 27 years, some of them, never been looked at and I know that, you know, if my kids, you know, heaven forbid, in years to come, will still be there, come to clear it out, they're not going to want my junk, 
you know, it's sentimental to me and my husband, not to um, them. And um, I did have a good clear out of it when we moved here five years ago. I found in the bottom of it all the letters me and my husband wrote each other when he was at uni. Oh, God, it was so corny. And there were letters describing, you know, planning my wedding and everything. And before we moved, I burnt them. Only on the basis that if my kids got hold of them, I was terrified they were going to put them on Facebook and have a good laugh at my expense because they were so not good. <laughs> anyway, I don't even know how I got onto that. On my blanket, yes. So what I did was I got the blanket out and I cut them, cut it up into sizes and I made them into um, project bags and I appliqued all um, different things on and put buttons on and stuff like that. But I don't know why I kept this one. I think I got the measurements wrong, so I just kept the one. So that's my first project. My second project, I'll do all my socks first. My second project is, um, oh, just plain, plain vanilla socks. Now these have been um, at my daughter's. We went to, in the holidays, my husband and I had been in the holiday, but we went through to London to spend the day with her. And um, I left my knitting bag at her, so her shop. So these, at her house, sorry, um, and about three weeks ago. So it's, I've just been reunited. So um, they're these ones. Now these are yarn from the Yarn Tart. And this one is Lady Stash. And it is a uh, Blue Face Lester, so my Ted base. And what I did here was I've got a pattern out called Bunkhouse Bell. Um, and rather than have um, all the pattern all the way down I just decided um because I don't do rib um I just decided for to have a few rows of the pattern um and then go into the plain stockinette all the way down just car knitting what's well, not just car knitting it's just plain vanilla socks um but they're lovely I like that so that's that one and this other one is um another yarn of mine and this is the on the platinum base and this is knit diva um, again, just a plain Latvian twist cast on, plain stock in it. But this, um, I've decided I'm going to do a afterthought heel. Now, it's not a true afterthought heel. Um, I just put some waist yarn in um, and we'll see how that works. Um, I don't even know why I decided to do a lap. After, oh, I know why. It's because I didn't have any stitch markers on me for doing picking up when I'm doing magic loop. So I thought, oh, I'll just do magic. Sorry, I'll just do um, that. So I did that. And this is in my bag from the yarn tart, and it's in my I'm a yarn tart. I'm proud of it. And these went out with my um, yarn tart club subscription. Everybody got um, a gift to everybody a bag. And on the back are a few of my badges. I won't show you that one. Well, actually, I will. My husband, when we were kids, well, I'm saying kids were about 24, 25, um, he made me a key ring with a picture of himself on it, which he thought was highly amusing. Um, and it's been in my jewellery box all these years. And then um, it's a bit of a craze, isn't it? Everybody putting badges on their um, knitting bags. So I popped that, I put it, I glued it, badge pin on the back and I popped it on there and then I had a message this morning asking if <laughs> you could just see a little bit of his face like that somebody asked him if he was Rick Astley <laughs> here's my daughter are you going to come in and say hello yeah. we're just piling Matilda's birthday presents up on the thing like one out I can't podcast no, with anybody fine, in the room <laughs> close the door close the door and the other badge is that isn't that beautiful? Um, Helen give it give me me and Emma one when we were at Pomfest. Um, oh, I can't get is that it? That's it. And it's a Shaw Society badge, and I believe they made their debut at is it Skiing Queen? Helen's in Australia. Is it in that at her mum's? Um, and I know she launched this month's. Um, Shawl Society, is it the Rune Shawl? Anyway, this one's, and they did it with cir Circus Tonic. Now I might have this wrong because I haven't got this written down. I'm just trying to remember from, and and the badges made their debut, and I think there were fifteen Australian dollars. I don't even know what that equates to in um, sterling. 
But anyway, I've got one and I love it. Um, so that's on this project bag till I finish this project. Then it'll go on the other project bag. So that's the other one. So my other projects, no surprise, are socks again. And this is um, a scrappy sock. Now I want, I wanted, this is my yarn and I wanted to knit socks out of both this one, but I didn't want to knit two pairs of socks. Now I've been doing a bit of a, been on a bit of a quest to find out the right needle for me, and I haven't got one. But what I did discover was that when I knit with Addy needles, the sock wonder needles, which are fabulous, um, have a looser gauge. Um, yeah, have a looser gauge. Now when I knit my husband and my son socks, I always knit. Well, I've been up to knitting um, seventy two cast on seventy two stitches for my son. And then, um, I think God must have been like wearing a Santa sock or something. But anyway, this one I've cast on 64 stitches because when I've had a look, it does stretch quite out, you know. And if he had feet like that, he'd look like desperate dad. But, um, oh, I'm not a waffler. Sorry. Anyway, so I've cast on 64 stitches <laughs> and I used these two colourways. Now, this colour is Bernard. And this colour is, I can't remember if it's Edmund or Ned. I think it might be Ned. Or it could be Edmund. I can't remember. So I'm just doing it. No, you know, no set pattern. Basically, when I got sick of one colour, I just changed the colour and what have you. So they are, those two colours caked up. And I'm nearly at the... Um, I'm nearly it for casting off the toes. Um, I've never done a toe decrease on these pins. So I think what I might do is I might just slip them onto the um, magic loop and do it quickly like that. Because by the time I've fiddled on, it'd be just as quick actually for to put them on um, D pins or whatever you're on magic loop fixer can do it a quick way. So yeah, they're nice, aren't they? Two by two rib. And then um, I don't even know if I'll do matching on the other one. And that's got a badge on. And that's in my Who Done It A Yarn Tart Did. I love these bags. They've been so popular. Um, they're just a bit of fun. They were in the £15. Um, but um, I've got some kits coming out shortly. Um, and when I do my kits, I've reduced the price a little bit on the bags so that I can fit, you know, anyway. They'll, if you get the kit, you'll get the bag cheaper than you would if you bought it separately. <clears throat> two more things on my needles. Let's see how long I've been going. Oh, just 10 minutes. Um, two more things on my needles. Um, and I absolutely love what I'm knitting. And one is um, the confetti jumper. Now, I was seriously enabled by Helen Stewart on this one. It's doing the rounds, this jumper, isn't it? Um, the only issue I've got with it is I knit it a bigger size because I didn't want it to be snug at all. So the bigger size is lovely, but I'm having to try... And Right, so what you do is, you, I'll show you. You cast on, and then from here down to here... I think you're increasing every fourth stitch. Well, I reckoned because of the increase that I went large, um, it would be absolutely massive on me. So I increased every 16 rows. And I've been really good. I've been trying it on as I go. And um, you knit from here to here for 18 inches. Now, I actually think that would be too long for me. Um, so I'm trying it on virtually every 10 rows just so it isn't long and um, I am a bit you know I have got a tummy on it so I want to cover that bit up um but I don't want it so that I'm sitting on it but I love it I'm absolutely loving it and um, it's John Arbin's um 100% Falkland Merino in the knit by numbers um 
and that's a really lovely colour. Every time I've taken a photograph of this, it's come up really bright pink and bright purple. And it's not. It's got like subdued tones to it. And I'm just looking. It's in my... If I've got one caked up, I'll show you. Yeah. So that's them. And I think I said last time that um, I couldn't make my mind up between the two colours. So um, I got them both. And I did say they were £15, but actually they're not. They're £12. So for the jumper... Um, I think you need three main and two contrast. Um, so it's like, I can't figure that out. I think it was, about, well, anyway. I bought four balls of each. Um, but lovely. I'm loving knitting it. It's a Viera Valamaki pattern. Um, and I've seen it knit in all different kinds of wool. Um, so, but yeah, really, really loving it. Um, I couldn't decide that when I knit the sleeves to change the dominant colour so that the purple becomes the, the four row and the pink becomes the two row. But the jury's still out on that one. Um, my husband says he thinks it'll look stupid. Um, well, no, he just said it would look like you wear... Well, he just wasn't very positive about it, really. Um, when I asked him what he thought, um, it wasn't constructive, so I thought I'd just ignore it. <laughs> As you do. <laughs> so that's that one. And then my final project, which I loved, is um, a shawl. Now I'll explain why I'm knitting this shawl. Um, this was a test knit, not a test knit for the pattern, but a test knit for another knit I want. I want... I bought some lovely wool that I'll show you in a minute when I was at Pomfest, um, and I wanted to knit a shawl for my son's wedding. Um, but I didn't want to go ahead and knit this one with this new wool because that cost me an arm and a leg. So I thought I'll try it out on a lace. So this is Helen Stewart's Sprite Fair. I think it's Sprite Fair. Yeah, Sprite Fair. Let me just double check yeah sprites fen shawl it's from the shawl society too and as usual helen gives the row by row um pattern and really can't feel it go wrong really um she sort of like leads you by the hand on it um great patterns clear as anything um love it but i decided to knit it in a lace in two laces two lace shapes and i got these when i was at um Edinburgh Yarn Festival a few years ago. Um, it was one of the yarns I bought. Have I got? And it is um, the Yarn Garden. And they're a northern company um, from up north, from my neck of the woods. So this one, well, I can't remember which is which, but it's 80% ultra fine merino, 20% silk. So it's 80-20 80, 80, mix. It was £20 a skein. And it has 800 metres, so there's loads of wool. And I've got two, two skeins. Um, I've got a variegated skein and a plain skein. So I've just put the plain skein in this bit. And the rest has been, you know, um, all the taller. I did, I, I, when I say I'm, I did change the pattern a little bit. So, I, I can't hold it up straight. From the first eyelet to the other eyelet um, is quite a, a lump of garter stitch. And that is um, replicated up at this end. But I didn't want that. Um, I decided to stick in another row of eyelets and then just a little row. And then you knit uh, a few rows of garter stitch um, before you start the final pattern. But I decided I, I, I'd had enough of garter stitch by this point. So I'm just going with a few extra rows of the... Is it Feather and Fan? Feather and Fan. Still using Helen's pattern, mind. I haven't gone from the pattern. I've just, like, used a different, you know, number of rows and what have you. But this is lovely. Now, there's 519 stitches on here. And, um... Lovely to knit. Um, so I'm really enjoying this. These are my chow goos, four millimetre needles. Um, sorry, I'm a bit distracted. I can hear my daughter saying, Mum, so I think she's taking the mickey out of us with one of the kids. We're doing the podcast. Those have a laugh at my expense. 
I'm like the in-house entertainment some days. Four mil, um, bit slippery at first, um, till I've got a substantial number of stitches on, um, and I'm desperate to cast it off, but um, I'm not going to. I'm going to wait till I'm. I want to get at least a few more of these done. Um, so yeah, really lovely. Um, and as soon as I cast this off, I think I'll cast on another of Helen's patterns. But I'm fairly sure it's going to be the snow melt shawl that I knit because I love that shawl. And I think I showed it to you last time that um, I made it and I used the, um, what did I use? I used um, Fiber Company Cumbria Finger and Weight with that one. Um, but I haven't got a very high tickle factor. I don't have a high tickle tolerance, I should say, and it tickles me a bit. So I've bought some lovely new wool for to do it. So that's all the things I've got um, on the needles that I could really confess to. I'm sure there's a... I did have a spate the other day where I saw some... I had some socks on the needles and I thought, well, they're never going to get finished in the month of Sundays. And actually, I didn't sort cast them on so long ago, I couldn't remember... The tweaks I've done in them, which is ridiculous, really, isn't it? Um, I used to be so good writing everything down, but that's just gone by the wayside now. So, yes, so there are all my whips. I've got no finished objects that I can think of. I did finish the socks I showed you, you know, the, the lilac and the yellow ones. I finished those, and they're in my box of socks account. So, I've actually got six, so I'm just missing two. Um, but I think one might be gifted next month for a birthday. Yes, there will be. My daughter on looks 30 next month. Um, should you say? Well, it doesn't really matter. 30 still young to me. Um, so she'll probably get them. I think. Because she's got tiny feet. So that's that. Plans. I don't know why I've wrote that down. I'll show you what I've bought first, shall I? What's on my shelf, I'll show you. Right. I've been to Pomfest. I went with two friends, Emma and Tony. And um, now I know Emma from the Cumbria Knitting Retreat. So um, I knew what it would be like to go away with her. But then Tony's my friend from locally. And she came with me. Um, oh, and it was just the best time ever. Emma and Tony got on really well. We were all really comfortable with each other. And, oh, Tony was a delight. Well, they were both a delight to spend the weekend with. We stayed at the Premier Inn on um, at Tower Bridge. Um, we all had our own rooms, which was great. But they were all right next to each other, which was, which was just by coincidence, really, because they didn't. we were all booked separately. So that was lovely. And um, we all got there. Tony and I got the training from Ipswich and Emma came from where she came from and um, we met and then we all went off to our rooms, got freshened up and then we headed off to Pomfest, which was the Pom Pom birthday celebrations. I can't remember where it was in London and I doubt very much whether I'd be able to find my way there again unless I find the pharmaceutical place because I had the Mike, was it Michelangelo thing on the side, well, I can't remember what it was. But I had this big image on the side of the building, and every time I recognised that, we knew we were in the right direction. So I did that, and um, I didn't buy anything on the first day because we just had to wander around to see what was what. Because I was fairly good with, I had a list. That was a waste of time. Um, and I had a budget, and that was even a bigger waste of time. Um, but we had a good look around, and then um, we came home, um, got lost again, but we did find a pizza place and have a pizza on the way home back to the hotel. Found the hotel where well, the Premier Inn, which was beautiful, really lovely and clean. The staff couldn't have been more accommodating. Um, got freshened up, and then we all went back for the party celebrations on the night time, which was really lovely. Um, they worked so hard, the Pompest Pom Pom team. Really lovely. Um, and as the marketplace was closed whilst this was going on. And then when that was done, we had cocktails, we met up with friends, and um, that were new through different events we've been to and what have you. And then um, we got back to our 
rooms, absolutely exhausted. Next day we got up and we spent the whole day there, which is where we're ordering our purchases. And um, I think we were worn out by about half past three. So we, yeah, about half past three. So we decided to come away and, um, you know, just have some time out in my, whole, in my room, so on my own and what have you. And then we met up again at seven o'clock and we went down to St. Catherine's Walk St. Catherine's Dock, sorry, and we had um, a meal out and what have you, and then we had a wander around, um, and about 10 o'clock we're all flagging, so we went back to the Premier Inn, but fortunately our rooms were on the ground floor, so we went in reception, and then there was a door, that a key door, you know, like a, a swipe door that you had to have your swipe card for, and um, so what we did was we went and made a cup of coffee in my rooms, and then we just walked through the door, and we're in the lounge, um, so we bought a coffee. And sat in the lounge and we lasted I think till about quarter to eleven and then we're all absolutely exhausted. Then on the Sunday, um did we have breakfast? We headed out to Loop. Yeah, that's right. We headed out to Loop and we, when, once we got to Loop, uh, is that Islington or Angel? I can't remember. Anyway, we went to a coffee shop and we had croissants and coffee and what have you. Then we wandered around. Then Loop was open and it was Tony's first time in Loop. And she was desperate to get a pair of the metal soft blockers. <laughs> Um, I got some quince yarn um, just two bolts that I was after for the, um, I'd already had some so I wanted some so I could have enough and then we went to raise stitches which oh I could have spent a fortune but I came away and I hadn't bought anything and then um, we hit Byron Burger for lunch and then we all went back to the hotel got the cases went a separate raise but you know it was fabulous Um with Emma and Tony, I had the best weekend ever. We laughed the whole weekend. We got on so well. They were great company. So thank you, girls. You made my you made my weekend. It wouldn't have been as good without you. So hopefully the next time, um, we'll all we'll all meet up and go somewhere else. But I'm seeing Emma on Sunday because I'm going to a knitting event. Uh, um, the quilt and exhibition in Birmingham and she's going to be there so we're going to meet up and have a coffee and what have you and seriously enable each other <laughs> and what have you so um yeah so anyway while I was at Pomfest um I had on my list that I wanted some John Arbin what I've knit my confetti in in I wanted four three three balls of one colour and one ball of another because I'm wanting to knit the winterly jumper from the Lane magazine. I think it's in the first one. It's lovely. It's like got a, um, a contrasting colour yoke from top down and then a plane underneath. So what I've gone for is this. And I haven't been very adventurous. They are exactly the same colours as what is in the pattern. Because I think it was the colours that drew us in really. Um, they were just so pretty and I knew John Arben wouldn't fail to have something like this so when I went I didn't even look at any other colours Um, I just went straight and got these Um, and I got them paid for them and um, I wrote down how many I had and then I thought, well, I better not write down how many I have because going to email me a receipt so John would see. So I scribbled that out. And then when I was going around, I was like thinking, that isn't enough money I've paid for that. Um, and what, what have you saw? So I thought, I'm going to go back. So I went back and um, he just charged me for two. He just charged me £12 for... No, he just charged me £24 for the four bolts. And um, so I give him the um, rest of the money and what have you, because, you know, it's no good being dishonest, I knew he had not charged me enough, do you know when you like think, that doesn't sound right, but there was so much going on in my head, thinking, um, oh I'll go to this store, and I'll go to that store, so I've got this much money left, and I'm thinking, £24 for that, that's really cheap, and then I was thinking, have I got the initial price wrong, and I knew I hadn't, um, so I went back, because I wouldn't have been able to knit a stitch of this wool, if um, I thought I hadn't paid the right amount, and I hadn't, so but I have now. So um, honesty is always the best policy, isn't it? I can't bear dishonesty. So yeah, so I thought they'd be lovely, and I can't wait to cast them on. And they come in their own little bag, John Arben, 
and I think to Tony bought some of this as well because she's knitting the confetti. I think she bought a lovely, lovely pale green. Just even like a hint of clear got pale green. And the softest of lilac. I think it was her who bought that. But it's beautiful. So it looked lovely. I can't wait to see that, what that looks like. Now, there was one stand I was going to go to that I thought was expensive. Um, so I didn't get the wool from there, which I was really disappointed about. But the argument was no good because what I bought cost more money. Um, but this stall for me was a showstopper. And um, every time I went by, I just kept, was sucked into this shawl. And it's more of you yarn. It's a Welsh company um, and run by a lady. I can't remember the lady's name, which was lovely. And it is um, naturally dyed and it is 50% finest merino and 50% mulberry silk. And, you know, it cost an arm and a leg. Well, I thought it cost an arm and a leg. Not some didn't, but it was, you know, but I bought two. Just in case I run out. <laughs> but there is 495 metres on this. So I reckon I'd get a good size snow melt shawl out of it. All, all the same shade. And I'll probably get a little Lizzie Hap, which is my design, out of it. Or I might even knit a Mabel shawl um, because it's my son's one. It might be quite nice to knit my own design um, using this wool. But it's beautiful. And I've bought some leopard skin shoes that sound awful, but they're fabulous from Clark's for the wedding. I've bought them a year early because I love them. This will not go at all with it, but I don't care. So now I'm in a dilemma. Do I change my shoes or do I change my shawl? But there again, it doesn't matter, does it? Because my feet will be under the table. See, isn't that beautiful? Got hints of yellow, uh, lilac and everything. In. So as soon as that one's finished, um, I'll be casting on something because I need the needles. Now, whilst on my vacation, my vacation, oh God, <laughs> that's very American, doesn't it? I had, whilst on holiday, we didn't have a holiday as such, we had a staycation. Which was really lovely because we did um, went to London for the day with Faye, and went to Brighton overnight, and I went to Yak Knit Group, which the ladies there are just lovely, and then um, we did loads of things. But while I was in London, I went to. Hey, God, I have a name in the shop. It's not Wild and Woolly. It's the one in Stoke Newton. Is it Yarn Art? Anyway, I know me till we see it says Cabbage and Roses, and. There wasn't anything that really I fancied till I saw this. And this is completely out of my colour comfort zone. And this is Swedish linen. It's actually coming up a bit lighter on there, but it's it's like a cherry, well it's like a post box red really. Um and I can't think what I'll knit with it. Let's have a look. It's got 420 meters on, so I bought um four skeins. I worked on the theory if I bought four skeins and that would be enough to do a top but then if I bought one skein I didn't want shawl with it. Oh I could do a shawl with it couldn't I? Because there was a sample already knit up um, and it was it obviously been washed a few times um, but it looked nice so I thought to myself you know it's nice to try different textures and I wanted something that um, I don't dye, I don't stock, um, and this, you know, so anybody who's got any suggestions for just a nice, I did think something very similar to the um, confetti jumper, just knit a loose gauge top that I could wear a vest or a camisole underneath, um, but no, really nice, the girl that worked there was lovely, so that was my holiday treat. Um, yeah, so that's all I've got to show you. The, um, the other thing that I've got, I will show you this, is um, I've made my little great niece a dress. Isn't that sweet? I hope it fits out. It's our christening in a few weeks' time. I think she's about four and a half months, five months. 
She might be six months. She might be six months. But she, I think I, I showed her grandma, my sister-in-law Maggie, last weekend, and um, she didn't say, "Oh, that wouldn't fit." I've just got to um, slip stitch the yoke down on the inside and figure out. I might just do little press stud fast. It's not very good. Um, I'm all right making dresses for me, but not for littlies. Um, if I buy some little press studs, just stick two press studs there and there, um, rather than buttonholes, because I haven't done buttonholes for years. Um, and I can't machine out but isn't that so sweet oh god it's lovely and I did it so that um well it was too long really so rather than um just hem it up as such I just did it like that I can't even begin to explain how I did that but it worked out all right in the end so that's lovely so that's all I've been busy on um I have been busy dying um as I said earlier at the beginning of the the shot the podcast that um the yarn tag has a three month yarn subscription um and everybody should have their um yarn by now for this month but i just thought i'd show it to you and it's this now that's looking really boring on there oh no that's it and this is called easy pink the last one was um fondant fancies um and that all went um and the one i did have i knit up um and that's in my box of socks that I forgot to bring down. And that's all like, it's a cream base. Um, but you can see it on my Instagram and what have you. But that's lovely. And this is Easy Pink. I always keep one back for me. Um, so I'll be casting this on soon. And the other one that I've just put in the shop is um, this one. This is O oh Bobby. And this is on my Jive base. And it's got Ipswich Town Football colours in and Newcastle United colours. And that was just by sheer coincidence. I thought, well, I'll do this, do this. And um, I decided to call it Oh Bobby because Bobby Robson, Sir Bobby, um, was the manager of both Newcastle and Ipswich. And as I'm from Newcastle and I live in Ipswich, I felt I could get away with that um, because I know he was, well, it still is, a adored by um, Newcastle and the people of um, north of, uh, of Newcastle and up north and likewise down here um, they absolutely adored him um, so yes and my son when he brought a book out he was up north when it came out so my dad took him through to Waterstones in Newcastle and he bought the book and uh, Bobby Robson signed it for my son and then um he had to chat with him because where he lived was is just local to me. And um, when Bobby Robson came to Ipswich, um, Tom took the book in the Wallace ones and uh, he remembered Tom and he signed it in Ipswich for him as well. So um, that tickled me. That was great. And I'm not a footballer at all, but my mum and dad, my mum is and my brother is. Um, and one of my mum's brother um, she comes from a hardcore footballing family, my mum. In fact, if there was match of the day on, if my dad put match of the day on when we were kids, it was for my mum, not for my dad. Um, I can't ever remember my dad being into football or anything like that. And um, But my brother and my mum and them lot are mad about football. Um, way more Grand Prix in our house when my husband is. So that's everything. I will just show you quickly the shop update, which are my bags which are Honk If You Knit Last Night. Yarn Tarts can have their cake and knit it. Don't Come Knocking If I'm Blocking. And Who Done It? A Yarn Tart Did. Now, um, there are, I think there are a couple of places left in the Yarn Tart Club subscription for October, November and December. And you will receive as well as three skeins of wool, you will receive one of these bags. But the bag will be, I'm a yarn tart and proud of it. Um, whilst the numbers last. Um, I have got another club coming out, but that is going to be a Suffolk Socks Club. And it's going to be a um, commercial yarn sock club. And it's going to be a lucky dip surprise. One thing I can guarantee, it will be good quality yarn that... I've used and that we're all 
well, might not all be familiar with it, but it is a good quality yarn and um, that has been testing it by me. Um, I wouldn't just give you, you know, I'll be getting new colours in that will be going out in this club. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking the ball bands off, caking it up for you. So it might be, or I might even skein it up so that when you get it, you'll not know what it is. Um, whoever, if a cust if the person, you know, if you buy a subscription and I know you've bought from me before, I will probably check that you haven't got this wool, so or, or this colourway. Um, if I have, depend on how many places I've got. Say if I do ten places or twenty places, not all twenty people will receive the same colour wool. I'm going to keep it completely surprised. Um, so one month you might get, I think it's 40, 40 pounds, you get a bag, but one month you might have, say, 100 gram balls, and then you might have a skein for to do coordinating heels and toes. The next month you might get three 50 gram balls. The next month you might even get four 50 gram balls, or, um, but they'll all be the same. Um, one month you might just get 100 gram balls with some notions and what have you in but it will be a good value um, good fun and good quality club for commercial sock yarn so I'm going to be doing that so right on that note I'm going to end here because my daughter is taking me out for a scone and a cup of coffee and then I'm going to go and see the love of my life, who is my little granddaughter, because I haven't seen her for about three weeks now, because um, they've been on holiday, we've been on holiday, and just want a day. And, you know, I'm super excited. We've got a, we've got her a pram. Well, the girls have bought her a pram, and it's so pink. I'll show you. I'll just turn it around so you can see it. There it's like. Oh, isn't that stinking adorable? And we bought her shoes. That's a dead boring present, isn't it? But that's a real grandma present. And then I couldn't resist it. I bought her a sit-on ladybird, who I'm going to have more fun with that. And because I've got tile hallway, I've um, already said to them, the present I've bought us for grandma's house. <laughs> She'll have too much of hers. <laughs> I'm a bit fun. I wanted to buy her a um, sand pit, but my husband said, no, it made a mess in the back garden. We've done all that bit. <laughs> I think, yeah, it'll be a map to over it up. Anyway, with that note, on that note, sorry, stay safe, happy knitting. Um, enjoy the rest of your week and um, I will see you next time. Bye. Ooh, I can't find the thing. <laughs>